In this week's episode of the Night Vision Show, Tim from Scott Country International takes a look at the best-selling handheld thermal imagers from Hick Micro and Pulsar and discusses the features and benefits of these popular models. We also catch up with the Scott Country International team at the Game Fair to see what the new products they are showcasing are this weekend. But first, Northern Ireland Pro Staff or Cattle is out and about with the Recon CT1 HD tripod, Hick Micro Alpex A50T and Wicked Lights A51 IR. Hey then folks, welcome back to Night Vision Show. Cali Hibs got to the National tonight. I'm after Wise and Old Fox has been taking a few hens and ducks from neighbour of mine. So I thought it would be a good test to come out and test the Recon BH1 as long as it with the Recon VM1 saddle. These tripods are from Wicked Light. Scott Conte has been doing them out for a while. 260 Reps has got his own brand, his own sort of, his own sort of setup. But tonight I want to give it a real good test, see how it holds up in this what looks like it's going to be an awful evening. So it's just going 20 past 8 here as you can probably see and the camera's picking it up it's starting to fall a wee bit darker than usual. Don't know how long I'm going to be out, don't know how long I'll have to wait in this fox so I'm hoping it's not too long but no foxes it'll probably be late enough. So for that reason I'm adding on this little light from Wicked Lights. It's the A51 IR. I'm going to add it on top of the Hick Micro Alpax which is going to go amazing. It's what I use when I'm out on night shoots. As you can see it's got a red light there as well. It's got two uh, infrared lights features on as well, one wider and one narrow for whatever distance you're sh shooting on. It'll also narrow from the top here as you can see and then your brightness is at the back along with the little knob here which turns it on and off. I'm going to add on now the Alpax which is going to, as you'll probably see later on, it lights everything up. It's a great little job so definitely check them out if you're looking at something in the red light and for an IR. So they are, that's it fitted now as you can see. It looks really well in the gun. I like to set mine up top just whenever the scope's open there and it's not in the road. It gives a bit more of a light. So that's my setup for the season. And unfortunately I didn't have time to grab the 223. Only bought the HMR 0.17 with me this season. So I'm hoping I can get right and close to this fox and do the business on him. Stay tuned. I use a tripod myself for rat rabbits. I have found absolutely no issue whatsoever. With the rifle slung over your shoulder, I will have my night vision on or my thermal later on around my neck. As I say, that leaves the tripod where I can set the tripod down, screw the rifle on, take a look with the spotter, see what's going on, and then move when I need to move. If I need to move left, I move right, whatever. As I said earlier there, but moving about with the, with the tripod, I have found no issues whatsoever. I have found that it's actually made my life easier because I'll show you later on I set the tripod up to what I need it to be where the rifle sits in I screw the clamp tight and that's it that, I know that rifle's not moving if I miss it's down to this guy, it's down to use it or it's never right down to the tripod same using one of the top of range scopes the mid that's out there with the Hick Micro I'm using one of the best thermal the spotters of the mid with the m 4 and again with Wicked Lights' tripod I mean, it's, you can get all the, all this gear and you can have say this and say that, but it's going to be down to the guy using it at the end of the day. It's going to be the end of the guy using it, but your own preference. To me, for the likes of this night shooting, where you're, you're going to be sitting in one spot waiting for a fox, for a trouble fox, where you know it's coming from, where farmers may be seeing it a couple of nights, and you want to sit and you don't want to move and you want to sit. These tripods don't only allow you to stand, but they'll also allow you to kneel and lie down. It'll come with a little thing in the middle, I'll show you just later on the video where you can change that from a short version to a long version. I use a long version for a couple of reasons. One, I'm short, as much height as possible to try and get where I need to be. Two, 
There's a little hook in the end of them right to hide my bag on just for carrying extra batteries, for carrying some water, carrying some snacks, whatever I need to carry, extra batteries for the thermal, extra batteries for the camera, whatever I need to carry, I carry it in the bag. It can hook right on underneath the tripod, rifle screws on, everything's on the tripod, the tripod's not moving. The bottom of the tripod can be changed from little round nubs to spikes, all depends on what terrain you're using it on. I like to use round nubs for here, it's quite rocky territory so the ground round nubs for just find a wee spot and sit in it and that's it. Sometimes the spikes can be a little bit awkward, All obviously as I say, all depends what you're using it on. But I'm going to give you guys a little look at the tripod now, get myself set up, take up just this target, make sure the alpax is exactly where I want it to be and yeah, let's we'll give it a couple of hours and see. Absolutely glorious evening, except for the midges are really out in force this evening. Just a quick demonstration here, as you can see, the legs are all locked into position. Sitting down, obviously, I'll adjust that because we're on a bit of a slant here. So I just unscrew the bottom, slide that out to where I want it to be, screw it tight again, and then the same on this side. And that's it. Ready to go. What we see on the sides here is little levels. Let's let you know that where everything should be at and where everything should be level. So then what I'll do then is I'll set myself up. Just screw this around. Open up the clamp. Take the rifle. Set the rifle in. Push it to where I want it to be. Screw it tight. And that's it. Completely hands free. As you can see, full movement there, left or right, no matter where anything's going to come. You want to move it up or down. Little knob here at the side. Be able to move up, down. That'll let you move it. If you want to leave it off just a little bit, I like to screw it tight there. So, as I say, nothing's going to move. Maybe you guys have a closer look at it. But here it is. All oh, its glory. Obviously, they will come with. Neoprene stuff like that. It's protected more than anything. Start from and plus it looks better. And you can see here with the little round nogs I was talking about earlier on, they are changeable. And here is V W V A M sorry. One saddle. I think it fits pretty well there, it looks really well. As I say earlier. That's movement. It also allows you to have a picking the rail here. For any added lights or anything like that. But that is my faction rifle. So that's the rifle zero day. Uh, Took a few more shots than I did. I actually forgot that I had it set to 35 yards in the first night and I had it with the rabbits. So it took me a bit to get it back to where I wanted to be, just over the 80 and 80 yard marker, put it at the bottom of the field, about 100 yards. So if I did come into that bottom of the field, I'll have to make a small slight adjustment just before I shoot, just sort of shoot a wee bit of a hold over. But other than that, we're ready to rock and roll. Midges are absolutely eating me alive. They have not stopped since I started <laughs> coming here. I must have upset one or two of them. Uh, I'm going to get the thermal gear rigged up now, get myself right around and roll, sit and just wait. Let the time pass by. What better reason could you be at? Well, that's a pretty cool feature here in this tripod. So, just here, you can see it says unlocked, unlocked, and removable monopod. A lot of people will see that, but as I say, that can be screwed off, which allows this to screw into this, which you then can just use that on its own. And obviously, with this away, you have the twin then on their own if you want to use it almost as a bipod. As I say, there's a, there's a longer shaft here for the middle. This can completely, if you screw this, this can completely lift out. There's a shorter one, which is only about here. I like the longer one just because then the bag's hanging down there on the side of the road. The shorter ones, I don't actually have it with me, but once you put the shorter one in, the three legs can fold right out and you can lie prone with it. Again, what else can you be what else can you ask for and you can lie prone and, and have the gun. If you don't have the option like myself, don't have a bipod in the bottom of the gun, 
this does everything. You don't really have any call going by a bipod. This can do it for you and it's gonna have a better hold and better stabilization for you. Tonight's adventure, I've got them for a IE6 Plus out with me this evening again. I had a recent go with it there on a couple of rabbits, as you've probably seen uh, on a couple of weeks ago video. Uh, it's absolutely amazing bit of kit. Uh, I can't fault it in any way whatsoever. It's made my life a lot easier. As you can see, it's stopped around my neck. It's here. It's up. Everything's there. It's it's really really easy. Especially with the likes of the tripod, where the tripod's down in front of you, your rifle's on the tripod, and your hands free. You don't want to be moving, putting stuff in out of your pocket. You just you want to be able to move smoothly, take a look to see what's in front of you, see what's about, and then hopefully take a shot. It's uh, it's getting pretty dark now, so I'm hoping that in the next couple of maybe an hour or so, I'll hopefully see fantastic Mr. Fox making an appearance. Unfortunately I'm going to have to cut this session short tonight As you can see behind me, the plenty of cattle laughing about these f these hills Farmer a hell over, I could see him driving about in a little buggy Decided to give him a ring to make sure everything was alright because he was shouting quite a bit He has lost a cow and calf, so I've decided to go and help out Thermal gear, see if I can help him, give him a hand to, to find it Look, one night with the fox, he's to say I have to live tomorrow night to come back out again to see where she's at I think maybe tomorrow night I'll come out a bit later and set up just down a bit from the, the hen houses but top priority tonight is going to be finding this cow and calf and again the thermal stuff from Scott Content International is definitely going to help me out. So yeah stay tuned hopefully I can find someone else. So here we are as you can hear see behind me this is almost keeps our chickens and ducks. This little pie tunnel here, a wee bit of area here which likes to let the chickens and ducks run out during the day and they come back in again at night. But unfortunately that's when the fuss had struck and I decided to take a few of them. Uh, if anybody that knows people that have chickens and ducks on a small collection, they're like family. So it's pretty hard and sure to see someone losing them. So I'm hopefully going to sort the problem out for you this evening. I'm going to sit out and hopefully sort out the issues that she's having. The fox is coming over now from a couple of fields over. Just from over this hedge right here, coming over from where we were at last night. So I'm going to hopefully set up here at the chicken house. Hopefully, if he comes back first enough around the night to get a look and see. If I can hopefully fix the problem that she has, she's having. So as you can see, I've set up just behind the house, just right behind the chicken house here as well. Plan of attack to see the is just to hopefully sit here in behind some pallets here, sort of waist in between some. To take away my silhouette. Obviously, something that's already been here before. The fox is obviously used to. It's quite early yet, it's only been 9 o'clock, but a uh, next door neighbour has said that he's seen it in around 9, 10 o'clock in his garden, so this field overlooks both their, both their back gardens, so I'm hoping that somewhere where I'm at, I'm going to end up catching them. There's a stiff, stiff, ble stiff, ble stiff breeze, sorry, blowing straight into my face, I'm sure the camera's picking that up. So I know I leave, not going to smell me, it's just making sure that I'm well hidden. Uh, he has to come up over a bit of a bank on a bit of a flat area there is a sand bank or a mud bank just at the bottom of this field not maybe 60 yards away and i put a little bit of dog food out in front of it i'm hoping that if it does come across he gets a whiff of it and he can head over there and that'll give me a safe shot so yeah fingers crossed fingers 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 toes everything crossed that he turns up tonight i can give this woman a bit of peace Welcome to the Game Fair 2023. Come visit the Scott Country International stand on Gunmakers Row K1175 with all the latest offerings from Hip Micro, the amazing Alpex, the Falcon FQ50, the FQ35, all the range from Hick. We have the amazing CT1 Recon Tripod and the CT3 Precision Tripod from 260 Rips. With all the latest offerings from Pulsar, we have the full Fermium range, the Duo, the 50 and the 55. Also got all the Axions, the XQ50, the XG, the XP50 merger, we've got the brand new Italian XG35, the C50, Wi-Fi, non-Wi-Fi, all the latest offerings from Zeiss, all the range from Hit Micro, the Cheetah, the Stella, the Griffin, the Lynx, come and have a look at the amazing merger, LRF XL50, the amazing M15 uh, trail cam from Hick Micro. Take one of them home today with a great show deal price. 
come see the amazing Hick Micro Raptor. Just look for us on Gunmakers Row. Look for the Scott Country flags and the Pulsar flags. We'll see you there. Yeah, Tim from Scott Country National. Uh, what we're going to talk about now is some of the leading products in handheld thermal uh, on the market at the moment. We'll start from big down to the smallest one, some of the features and what they all entail. So what we're going to start with here is the merger LRF XP50. This is Pulsar's binocular um, offering. Our ergonomic binocular design. 640 by 480 sub 25 net D. Now a thousand meter laser range finder, boasting an 1800 meter detection range in an ergonomic binocular configuration. So your thermal lens and your laser range finding lens there, and everything's a, a nice little control in the top there. Now the good thing you get with these is you don't get the eye fatigue as you would with a monocular. So binoculars versus one eye versus two eyes, you don't get so much eye fatigue. When you take that monocular away, you normally got a bright eye um, showing out. So that's something you really get with the binoculars. Now moving on to sort of a, a flagship monocular. This is Hick Micro's uh, Falcon FQ50. Now everyone knows about these, a massively popular um, monocular. A 640 by 512 sub 20 net D. Um, really nice little ergonomic um, monocular. Fits nicely in the palm of your hand, powered by a single 18650. Now the good thing with these is like popular with the stalkers and just away in the jacket. And these are 2,600 meter detection range on these, and these are these are really popular at the moment. Nice, nice ergonomic design there. All the buttons are there in the palm of your hand. All got wireless uh, streaming. Take video, take recording, take sound. Uh, all zoom in, zoom out. They can stream to your phone. You can take the videos off onto the Hick Site app and do it that way. Again, 50 mil focal length on this one. So. The other offering that Hick Micro does within uh, that model is the FQ35. Now it's exactly the same shape as the FH35 here, but it's got all the internals of the, the FQ50, but with the 35mm focal length, same as the FH35. Now the FH35 is a 384 by 288 uh, sensor resolution, still with a sub 20 net D. Again, everything you get off the Falcon same battery same function same same button design layout everything like that and you get everything there no laser range finders on these ones and then moving down to something like the axion axion comes in two models this is the xg model which is a 640 by 480 uh, sensor and this is sub 40 net d and the beauty of the xq is a 384 by 288 sensor but still with a sub 20 net d at C Pro, but you get a laser range finder on the side of these. So, which which one ever you go for? If you're going for price, go for the the Hick. If you want the more more function, still a 35 mil uh, focal length on this one, a times two, up to a times eight magnification, thousand meter laser range finder. From a um, all from a little handheld monocular, powered by. Uh, APS-5 battery system these are these are really popular so you're sort of starting out into the thermal world these are a good little model to get into you get the good functionality of the laser range finder as well which you don't get with the other um, the other brands and I'll say they're available in two models the XG35 obviously the LRF and non LRF then there's the XQ35 Pro LRF and non LRF so they're all just a slightly different. I run a test on these two side by side. Um, and what you do get with the 640 resolution is the ability to zoom in ever so slightly and you not get so much pixelization. But what you're getting with the pro version is a slightly clearer image due to it being sub 25 net D. So again, just to recap over all the sort of the major ones, if you're going sort of flagship model, again, 640 by 480 uh, sensor resolution with sub 25 millikelvin 1000 meter laser range finder uh, binocular configuration now there is a there is another model up from this the, the XL that's a HD sensor in that 
it's a, a 10 by 27 by 768 uh, sub 40 net D on the XLs uh, we've not got a sample here for, to show you today but you'll be able to see them at the shooting show uh, next week uh, just recapping down again from the Falcon to the FQ50 you've got the monocular design powered by an 18650 640 by 512 sub 20 net D in a monocular there really popular also get that in the FQ35 as well with the same internals but the 35mm focal length moving down the scale the FH35 to 384 by 288 sub, tw sub 20 net D again just with a 35mm focal length giving you that wider field of view as opposed to the 50 so all you're going to get with that is the 50 you're going to have the ability to zoom in and not lose so much clarity at the longer range but you'll see a wider field of view with the 35mm focal length and again Moving down to the Axiom range, still a 35mm focal length, 640 by 480, sub 40 net D, detection range up to 1750, 1000 meter laser rangefinder. So they're just a few of the offerings of what you've got there, from sort of big down to small, but still capable. And these, these are the most popular um, sort of monoculars that we sell on, on the market at the moment. Now I'll do another series of this uh, leading into popular scopes and we'll start again from right down from the Alpex to TD50 to C50. Rips has already covered a lot of that anyway, um, doing the big free video, but then we'll, we'll lead that on to doing uh, what's right for you, NV thermal, lower end thermal, higher end thermal, rifle scopes, and we'll go from there. So if you like this sort of content, like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell down below to get notified when we do our next videos. This has been Tim for Scott Country. Cheers.